Soccer is Argentina's most popular sport. It has a rich and storied history, which is deeply intertwined with the culture and economy of the country. There are not many places that can match the passion and fervor that Argentines have for the beautiful game. With over 3,000 clubs, many intense rivalries, and 150 years of play, there's a lot to discuss regarding Argentina's fierce devotion to the sport. Soccer, like many other sports in Argentina, was introduced by British immigrants in the 19th century. Therefore, many of the clubs have English names. Two Englishmen, Thomas and James Hogg, had a meeting on May 9, 1867, and founded Buenos Aires Football Club, which became the first football club not only in Argentina, but in all of South America. A Scotsman named Alexander Watson Hutton would become the founder of the Argentine Football Association. He is considered the father of Argentine football. The biggest rivalry in Argentina is between Boca Juniors and River Plate. This is known as the Super Clásico. They are two of the oldest clubs in Argentina, both starting in the early 20th century. Both were founded in the working class neighborhood of Buenos Aires known as La Boca. River Plate later moved to the more affluent neighborhood of Nunez in 1925. This has caused many to believe that Boca is the club of the working class, while River is the club for the rich. However, both have supporters of all social classes. It remains the fiercest rivalry in Argentina to this day. Argentina experienced most of its success internationally during the 1970s and 80s. In 1978, they hosted the World Cup and would later win it on their home soil. In the early 1980s, Argentina's greatest player would arise, Diego Maradona. He would become so successful and popular that he would eventually be viewed as a god to many Argentines. In 1982, Argentina and England fought a war over the Falkland Islands. England easily won the war. This was a very difficult and tense time in Argentina. Four years after the war, Maradona would lead Argentina to victory in the 1986 World Cup, defeating England along the way. This was especially important because Maradona gave hope to the people of Argentina during a time of much political instability and uncertainty. Argentina had eight presidents in under three years, and Maradona provided a much-needed lift to the spirits of the Argentine people. Although he is a controversial figure today, he is still seen as a legend in the history of soccer. During the 1990s, Argentina was stuck in a capitalistic economy. As a result, many businesses became privatized. Airports, postal services, and telecoms became privately owned as well as water, oil, gas, and electric companies. However, many attempts at privatizing clubs never became successful. As a result, the Argentina government kept control of the sport. In fact, there was government intervention for both the 1994 and 1998 World Cup. There were no restrictions on who could watch the World Cup. Everyone had the opportunity. This created a common connection between all of Argentina. The nationalism that had begun became embedded into the country's culture. Even though soccer has been a large part of the Argentinian culture, there has been ongoing issues with gender inequality. At the beginning of March 2019, the women's club was granted professional status, which provided them with a monthly salary of 15,000 pesos, or $365. This salary is equivalent to that of the male players in the 4th division. Prior to this year, women's soccer players typically did not receive any money. This salary may not be 
as much as that of the male players in the first division, but this is the first step toward gender equality in Argentina soccer.